my brothers and sisters, if we would be completely honest with each other today, most of us would have to admit that we deplore and despise troubles and trials. We don't like to encounter great difficulties. Matter of fact, we would rather live life without facing any adversities or any kind of setbacks. Am I right about it? Neither do we care for times of sickness or stress. Nevertheless, it is generally because of these things that sinners turn their lives over to the Lord. And then as Christians, it is generally through these things that our faith in God is either proven to be weak or strong. Listen. Our faith, in order to become effective, must be tried. Matter of fact, that is how faith is developed. As a matter of fact, faith is not really faith until it is proven to be so. To me, faith is when we trust God to do for us what we could never do for ourselves. It is when we tried him and trusted him to help us through the storms of life. Even though our ship is small and the sea of life is large. Faith is when we trust him to protect us in times of extreme danger. When there seems to be no other way out. Faith is when we trust him to supply us with whatever strength we need in order for us to bear whatever burden are ours to bear. Faith. Faith is to trust him to provide for our daily needs, however small or large those needs may be. And the faith of which I'm speaking is when we trust God to keep us in the hollow of his hand regardless of our circumstances. To me, to me, faith is when you cannot see God, nor feel God, nor hear God, yet you know without a shadow of a doubt that he is and that he is ever present, and that he truly cares. Let me again emphasize the point to you. 
that faith, in order to become effective, must be tried. Few people, not many of us, enjoy having their faith tried. Am I right about it? Why, Pastor? Because it generally means facing tormenting frustrations, confronting adverse circumstances, bearing heavy burdens, enduring difficult hardships, suffering through unspeakable sorrows, dealing with perplexing problems, and sometimes it means encountering extreme pressure. But all I'm telling you is in order for our faith in God to mature, we must go through some faith trying and faith building experiences. When you pray and say, God, increase my faith, in other words, what you're really praying is, God, send it my way. <laughs> I know my faith grows in the fire. So if I'm praying for more faith, then I know fire's on the way. Listen, brothers and sisters. You may not necessarily think of it as such. But every time that you fall down on your knees to pray, your faith will be tried. Oh, man, Lord, have mercy. Every time that you claim the promises of God, your faith will be tried. Uh, every time you begin to praise and worship the Lord, every time that you stand up for truth, every time you encounter a temptation, and every time you and I make a mistake, our faith will be tried. Furthermore, furthermore, every time the Holy Spirit speaks to your heart, and every time you have the opportunity to witness and then for some of us, every time the weather changes, our faith uh, will be tried. As a Christian, as a Christian, never will a day pass by without your faith being tried. Somehow, some way, in some manner or another, and probably when you least expect it, and maybe even when you are the least prepared for it, your faith will be tried. Now, don't you think for one moment that you are the only one whose faith is being tried? 
Tell your neighbor you're not the only one. Matter of fact, if you would take a cursory look through the scriptures, you would discover that there are a whole lot of folk who had their faith tried. Can I give you some examples? Abraham's faith was tried as he set out looking for a city not made by man. Noah's faith was tried as he labored for years constructing the ark. Moses' faith was tried as he led God's people out of Egyptian bondage. Joshua's faith was tried as he marched around the walls of Jericho. Joseph's faith was tried when he was sold into Egyptian bondage. Daniel, his faith was tried when he spent a night in a den with starving lions. The Hebrew boys, faith was tried when they were thrown into a fiery furnace. Nehemiah's faith was tried as he labored to rebuild the fallen walls of Jericho, of Jerusalem. Jacob's faith was tried when he returned home to meet his brother Esau, whom he had deceived years before. John, Lord have mercy, faith was tried having been isolated on the Isle of Patmos. The 120 disciples, faith was tried as they awaited the outpouring of the Holy Spirit in the upper room. Remember the prodigal son's father? His faith was tried as he prayed for and waited for his son return from a far country. The disciples of Jesus, faith were tried when they were out on the boat in the midst of a storm. And it would appear that every time the apostle Paul turned around, that his faith was being tried. <laughs> yes, my brothers and sisters, just like the plethora of biblical characters I just named, listen to me again, just as their faith was tried, your faith and my faith will be tried. But the question is, how will you and I respond when our faith is being tried? Hmm. Let me let you in on a secret. Many people respond to when their faith is tried by grumbling and complaining. 
Do I have any grumblers and complainers in the house? Some folk feel sorry for themselves. Some folk become cold and indifferent in their soul. And some folk allow the devil to harass them day and night by questioning the love and the mercy and the grace of God. And many people respond by just simply throwing up their hands and quitting. Oh, Lord. What you talking about, Pastor? Folk going through their faith being tested, being tried. They quit attending church. Quit worshiping the Lord. Quit paying their tithes. Quit witnessing to others. Quit rejoicing in the Lord. Quit praying and trusting God. And then some of us quit reading our word. Hey, lean up and tell you, neighbor, don't you quit. <laughs> All right, Pastor, you say don't quit. What should I do? Check out the words of Peter. In 1 Peter 1, 6 and 7, which is our scriptural text. Peter says, in all this, when your faith is tried, you greatly Rejoice. Oh, man, wait a minute now, Peter, you crazy. When I'm going through the fire, I don't feel like rejoicing. But Peter says, greatly rejoice, though now, listen to what he says, for a little while. You may have had to suffer grief in all kinds of trials. But then he says, these have come. The trials have come. The, the tests have come in order to prove your genuineness of your faith. And you will discover if you can hold out that your faith is of greater worth than gold. <laughs> and your faith will result in praise, glory, and honor when Jesus is revealed. Oh man, I'm almost through. In other words, Peter admonishes us to recognize that when our faith is being tried, that it is only for a little while. Y'all, 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 y'all. Dr. Curtis told us about emphasis. And, 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 and marking the place of emphasis, Peter says the trying of your faith is only for what? In other words, a season. That's what King James Version says. And how many of you in here know that seasons don't last forever. <laughs> Tell your neighbor, seasons change. So how do we respond while we're in the midst of a season of trial? Peter tells us, 
Rejoice! Why, Pastor Wood, would Peter tell us to rejoice when our faith is being tried? Because after every season of trial comes the season of blessing. Oh, man, y'all missed it. When you're going through the fire, if you can just remember that I'm only in this fire for a season, only for a little while, and after a while, after I go through my season, I know that blessings are going to flow my way. In other words, what Peter is saying, Peter is saying in the midst of the fire, go ahead and shout. Go ahead and shout for the not yet which is on the way. Come on, somebody. Uh, listen to me good as I prepare to take my seat. Hebrews chapter 11, verse 6, tells us, but... Without faith, it is impossible to please him. For he who comes to God must believe that he is. And that he is what? A rewarder of those who diligently Seek him. Oh, man. What are you saying, Pastor Wood? I'm saying that it is absolutely impossible to please God without faith. Did y'all hear what I said? I said it is absolutely impossible to please God without faith. And how does faith come? By hearing the word of God and appropriating the word of God in your life. But then faith also is developed in the fire. In other words, don't expect to get to heaven without faith. <laughs> Don't you dare expect to overcome temptation without faith. Don't you dare think you can resist the devil without faith. Don't you think you can have your prayers answered without faith. But remember, Faith must be tried. Now as I go to my seat, to my unbelieving friends that are here today, don't you dare try to tell me that you can't put your faith in God. Why, Pastor Wood? If you can put faith in a glass of water and drink it, then you can put faith in God. If you can put faith in a safety deposit box, for all your 
your valuables, then you surely can put faith in God. If you can put faith in a set of brake shoes that will stop your vehicle, then you surely can put faith in God. Listen, if you can put faith in a surgeon to operate on you, then you can put faith in God. If you can put faith in an airline pilot to fly you across America, you can put faith in God. And for some of you adventurous folk, if you can put faith in a parachute and jump out of a plane and trust the parachute to keep you from falling, then you have no problem placing faith in God. You know why I say that? Because all those things I just mentioned, all of those things may fail or disappoint you. But I'm here to tell you that God never fails. Lord have mercy. But for faith to mature, it must be tried. But after being tried, after your faith is tested and you have stood the test, you can give praise, glory, and honor to God. Am I right about it? Come on, some of us here right now, people have to look at us twice because when we were going through the fire, they thought, did y'all hear what I said? They thought that we would not make it out. But God, Uh, tell your neighbor he kept me he kept me he kept me in the midst of the fire in the midst of the test in the midst of the trial and you wonder why I shout like I do you wonder why I praise him like I do you wonder why I give him glory? Because, because he kept me in the midst of the fire. And how many of you know if he did it for me, he can certainly do it for you. There is no secret what God can do, what he's done for others, he can do the same thing for you. <laughs>